and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Vortex Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56. In this review, we're going to be reviewing the Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56. Now, this optic is generally catered towards the PRS competition type shooters at a price that is typically much lower than the PRS type rifle scopes. So this is going to be generally something between the Vortex Diamondback Tactical and the Vortex Viper PST. So this one retails for about $700 US, or I just picked this one up in Canada for about $1,000. And yeah, I got this one out of pocket. This one was not donated to me. This was not provided to me by any company. This one is 100% sponsored by myself. <laughs> So, I mean, I was really excited about this scope because it has a ton of really big features. You have a ton of internal adjustment, which was one of the major features I wanted. A hard type zero stop, a 34 millimeter tube, um, which tip typically means that the internal adjustments are going to be more precise than if you put because this one has 110 MOA. If you were to pack that in a 30 millimeter tube, likely or it's possible that your internal adjustment might not be as precise. It's easier to fit a more precise instrument in a larger instrument. So uh, it has a 56 millimeter objective, which is really gonna scoop in a lot of light and a, an illuminated reticle and a badass reticle. So let's get down to business. Let's start this review off with the glass quality. This is 25 magnification. Now we are gonna be showing you a lot more shots through the glass just because, you know what, this is a more expensive type optic than we typically do. So I wanna spend a little more time focusing on these really important features. I want you guys to really get a good idea of just how clear, how crisp and how sharp the image is. And if you do own one of these models, you know what, feel free to share your experience down below in the comments so other viewers can, you know what, see if you share my perspective, if you have additional feedback that, you know what, things I may have missed, uh, just share that in the comments below. And if you know what, you're viewing this, and if you have not yet purchased one, well, check out the comments for other people's feedback as well. All right, so for glass quality, uh, this one definitely really was impressive. It's really bright, as I said earlier, with that 56 millimeter objective. Now I have the Vortex Viper HST. Uh, not here right now, it's currently being fixed under warranty. And I found this one to be much brighter. Well, obviously it has a bigger objective, which was kind of normal. As for how sharp the image is, I found it really was quite similar. When considering around similar prices, that's kind of what I expected as well. And according to the specifications on Vortex's website, this is uh, ED glass. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty darn good stuff. So we're gonna give it a five out of five. Next, we have the eye relief. Vortex advertises a 3.7 inch eye relief. I found the eye relief length was just fine. Uh, typically, I like them to have up to four inches, which is really nice. Uh, it just gets, you know what, you can be that much further with the Magnum recoiling rifles. Uh, but 3.7 is just about as good, which is just great. Next thing we wanna look at is the fast focus eyepiece. This is really smooth, there is zero slop, even if I, if I really try to, to move it, there is zero slop whatsoever in this eyepiece. So we are gonna give it a five out of five. Next we have the Focused Parallax. Uh, this one goes all the way down to 15 meters, no lower than that. And yes, it does actually focus around that distance. Um, I did notice that the distances in on the indicator here were not quite correct. At about 100 meters, I had to adjust the Focused Parallax to be somewhere around 150 as opposed to 100. So no, the numbers are not correct. And if you do know, a lot of companies don't even put numbers just because it's really a challenge to get these numbers to match the actual distance. Next, the focus is I found it to be quite stiff, which I actually notice other people comment on that online. Uh, yes, I do find this to be fairly stiff as well. It's movable, but you just gotta give it a little bit more uh, energy than you typically do. So that's just my feedback on that. And it focuses all the way from 15, 20, 30, 50, 70, 500, 200, 300, 500, and infinity. So for the focus parallax, due to the uh, stiffness of the focus parallax, we are gonna give it a four out of five. Next, we have the recoil. Well, let's get out to the range. We are going to shoot this on my 308. Typically, I put it on a 223 first and then I shoot it. Well. I mean, it, I really don't expect it to die on a 223, so we skipped and went right away to the 
that's a pretty good group. So obviously it does survive recoil. I mean, I'm not putting it on a 338 Lapua Magnum or anything. I don't really have the budget to test rifle scopes with that kind of caliber. Uh, on a 308, it did just fine. There were no issues whatsoever. Uh, and I find the, the reticle is really nice. It's really nice to do some target shooting with. It has that very fine point in the middle. I mean, we're gonna get to that reticle in just a moment, but this is a quick glimpse of what it looks like. Recoil, we're obviously gonna give it a five out of five. Let's go out and do a little bit of long distance shooting. We're gonna try something new today. We're gonna be using the Tacticam. Uh, we're gonna be shooting at, well, 200, then 300, then 420 meters. Now, so far, I mean, I've been using this Strike Eagle uh, for about probably the last two hours today, doing some, a little bit of long range shooting like this. And I gotta say, it's really, really nice to use. The glass quality in this optic is definitely A plus on this. It's really nice. The turrets are, are really positive. And I mean, having the zero stop is a really, really nice advantage. Well, as anybody knows, if they do a lot of long range shooting and a lot of variable target distances. So I'm shooting at 200, then 300, then 420, and then bringing it back. Now, mind you, what you guys are gonna be seeing through the Tacticam, it is really, really bright out today. And I mean, I think there's gonna be a little bit of glare in the picture, but it should look pretty good. Uh, as you notice, I do have a white uh, tape behind the Tacticam. I'm really only doing that in order to show glass quality. So when you do remove this, you do get some of the light reflecting through and you do notice that, for example, if I do this, let's see, uh, you guys are gonna notice a bit of that right now. So when I'm showing glass quality, typically I just put this on there. But when I'm shooting, well, obviously I need to see through the scope. So let's put a couple rounds down target and let's have some fun. Okay, let's move it on to 420. There it is. And adjust our focus. There we go. All right, I'm gonna cover this just so you guys can get a better image. That's what it looks like really for me. I mean, the glass does actually look a little bit better than what you guys are seeing in the tact cams. Just cameras are, uh, they're a bit of a challenge getting the focus, well, from, from the, in the camera's perspective to what it actually is. I mean, this camera is pretty much one of the top of the line cameras for uh, scope cameras. And I mean, it's, it's still a little bit of work to get there perfectly. All right, so for 420 meters, I got to do 10 MOA up, well, 10.25 and about three MOA right. And we should be bang on. Or close, anyway. I think the winds have lessened. <laughs> yeah, they have. But five minutes ago it was three MOA, right? And now it's only one. Now mind you, for what I'm doing, I, I mean, having a zero stop, I'm not really not in any competition. I'm not really shooting all that far. 
Uh, I mean, 750 would be a little bit more impressive, but we're only shooting up to 420 meters. All right, that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun shooting this thing out to 420 meters. I did try my luck at about seven, but uh, it was really, really windy, and I, I have a Kestrel on the way, but you know, I'm not just, I'm just really not the best at gauging wind. And I could mo I spot my shots, but I take one shot and then I take another and it would be another good four M away apart. And I take another shot and it would be another three. And it really was inconsistent and really a challenge for me to get anything consistently in the same spot. So hence why there was no footage of me shooting at 700 meters for you guys to laugh at how bad I am. <laughs> anyway, this optic is great. So let's move on to the turrets. Now these turrets have 110 MOAs worth of internal adjustment, which is a lot. I mean, that is fantastic. That is what you want to see in a, an optic at this price range. So something around $700. That's, that's the ticket you want. Uh, it has 25 MOAs worth of uh, internal adjustment per revolution. And additionally, it has little numbers in brackets above the, the big numbers, which is for your second turn. So that's really a neat feature to have on, on, on this rifle scope. And it'll go all the way up to, uh, well, obviously 49. So I did have this mounted on my 308 with a 20 MOA rail. Uh, one thing I did notice is the minute I got to 47, so let's say I'm, I'm zeroed here. It goes a little bit lower, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's say I adjust. Okay, I did my first revolution. I'm now working on my second, and it'll stop on 47. I did observe this on my 20 MOA rail, and well, just the same obviously on my zero MOA rail, which means you will only get 47 MOA if you are using the zero stop. If you are not using the zero stop, uh, I would recommend, you know what, you can get a 30 MOA rail and you can really take advantage of more internal adjustment. So you just have to know that the zero stop will limit the amount of internal adjustment that you have. So if you are really going for extreme long range shooting, um, well, if 47 MOAs is not sufficient for you, you're going to want to remove that zero stop and well, keep going. Let's head outside. Let's test these turrets. Now we're going to do a little bit more than we usually do, just because this is more of a premium optic. Let's start with the box test. Let's go 10 MOA up. Perfect. Let's go 10 MOA right. Perfect. Let's go 10 MOA down. Perfect. And back to center. And we should be exactly where we started. All right, so we've already done 10 MOA. Let's go for 20 MOA. That's 10. And that's a total of 20 MOA. Let's go 10 more MOA. Ten. Perfect. And let's go up another 10. Wow, bang on. All right, let's go back to zero. Excellent. All right, let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification. Typically, this is where you would notice it. If there is any. All right, let's see how much internal adjustment it has. That's it. And that's it. Now, in order to use the full internal adjustment range, I did not put the zero stop in at this point. This is how you install the zero stop on your Strike Eagle. So let's say we've zeroed the rifle, as you guys can see through the scope. We're going to remove our turret cap here. Now it does come with the actual tool. This will scar up a little bit your turret caps. So you remove this, you install this little uh, shim, you install this little washer, 
you're going to push it downwards and you're going to turn it until it stops. Now it should always be legible here, so don't put it in upside down. Now you're going to put your turret cap right back on, but you're going to turn it so that the zero marker is right on the line. Sorry, and I don't think... Just like that, and it will line up perfectly. So now we're going to tighten our turret cap. Just like that. And as you can see, well, that's backwards. We can adjust as high as we want, and we can go right back down to zero. Now you're going to notice it's actually five clicks lower than zero. According to Vortex, this is intentional. So for the turrets, it did fine for the box test. There was no point of impact change with magnification. There's 110 MOAs with internal adjustment, obviously with the zero stop removed. You only get 47 if you use the zero stop, which I found is a pretty, uh, I mean, I'm never really gonna shoot <laughs> up to 47 MOA. I, I, I'm just not that caliber of shooter yet. Uh, maybe if I was using a 22. Actually, that's still quite a bit of a challenge. So 47 MOA is still a lot for most of us. For your regular PRS type shooters, 47 is, is gonna be sufficient to get out to one kilometer and do your all your competition type stuff. For your extreme long range shooter type people, remove your zero stop. Uh, how do I feel about these turrets? They are very positive. They're fairly audible. I mean, listen to this. I did kind of find that the windage uh, adjustment was more positive than the elevation one, just by a little bit. It, it just feels a little bit stiffer. The clicks feel just a hair sharper. I mean, I'm being picky here, I'm splitting hairs, but that's just my thoughts on that. Uh, in my opinion, the Vortex Viper HST does have more positive clicks and much sharper clicks. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not really, these, these obviously have different internal systems and that definitely shows. Uh, in my opinion, um, the zero stop eating a lot of your internal adjustment. Yeah, that's definitely a drawback, but 47 MOAs worth of internal adjustment is still more than sufficient for pretty much everybody. Ideally, it would have been great if it used up a little bit less, but hey, that's what we have to work with. So for that reason, we are gonna give it a four out of five. Next, we have the reticle. Now this is the EBR7C reticle. Now you can get it in MRAD or in MOA. I have the MOA version, which I mean, I'm just more familiar with understanding feet and when I'm talking about distance, if I'm shooting you know, at six feet high, it's just easier for me to mentally uh, figure that out in MOA versus a uh, meter and you know at 110 centimeters i'd just be like what you know i just can't figure that out so that's why i went with the moa version either way i mean this reticle is badass you have a lot of holdover points and what's really neat is you have the uh 12 moa i think it's a 12 moa i'm not actually looking at the reticle right now but your 12 moa marker on your elevation actually where it's located is actually 12 moa of hold of wind as well. So they really thought out a lot of things in this reticle and they really did well in designing it. Additionally, the reticle is illuminated. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so that's the first setting. Likely you probably can barely see that. Second setting, third setting, fourth, fifth. There you go. Now you should be able to start telling. That is the ninth, 10, and 11th setting full daylight i don't believe you can really tell on the on the screen here not really so that's a really nice feature to have so we are going to give this a solid five out of five for the reticle and lastly we have the warranty now obviously uh, i mean i'm not giving you guys any news so the vortex warranty is one of the best in the industry you send it in no matter what the problem and they will fix it whether you run it over you with your truck or it burns in your house fire uh, vortex has a top-notch warranty so my overall thoughts of this rifle scope. Well, you know what? I bought this one with my own money. I was considering just, you know, buying it, reviewing it, and reselling it again at, well, at a loss, whatever. But I'm likely going to keep it because, I mean, I'm really impressed with the overall build and design of this rifle scope. I mean, the turrets feel really positive. I really like the reticle. Um, the glass quality looks nice. It's a bigger, it's a brighter image compared to my Vortex Viper HST, which is the one I have for my personal rifle, the one that I don't use, let's say, all the time for reviews because, you know what, every time I go shooting with my friends, my rifle rifles are scopeless because, well, I'm always just switching scopes. So I bought a third rifle just for me and just for shooting with my friends and I bought the HST for that rifle. And likely I will be selling the HST and just buying this one because this one is 
definitely uh, a step up, and I'm really, really liking it. Um, and you know what? It comes with a few, it comes with a throw lever, which is nice. And um, yeah, so I'm I'm really liking this one. So before you do buy this one, I mean I do have some links in the descriptions below, so check those out. Uh, Impact Shooting is going to have a review on this rifle scope, and uh, I mean he's a professional, he's a pre-RS shooter, he, um, and he'll give you his opinion on this rifle scope. So check him out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next review.